Thanks, everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It's the 21st of May, 2020. Um, we're delighted you're here. We remind you that we're governed by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Uh, be kind, be nice, and uh, thanks for being here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that we can talk through the agenda and be sure that we've got the right topics on the agenda. So we'll review the open action items. We will, we've, I put a topic on for Google Summer of Code projects, but I think we've got, well, we can look to that briefly, but the more crucial thing that I wanted to be sure we talked to is Google Plugin Performance GSOC project, and Jim had notes on the moving of the PowerPC virtual machine. And then I have a concluding item on Docker images and Alpine. Are there other topics which need to be need to be discussed? Oh, Oleg had suggested we may want to discuss Java and 25 years. I wasn't sure what the topic specific details were there that he wanted to talk about. No, I just wanted to, to highlight it in a special interest group. Oh, okay, good. All right. Yeah, so there is no specific topic. Okay, super. All right. Hello, Oleg. Thanks for joining. All mm. right. So on a, well, thank you very much. Any other topics we need to add here? Mm, I asked um, the uh, custom Jenkins distribution uh, build service team whether they plan to join because they defin definitely plan to join, but yeah, I'm not sure where are they. Uh, so uh, we might have a discussion about that. Okay, great. All right. Yeah, so I think we've we've put the Google Summer of Code projects in as line items. Good, very good. Any other agenda items that need to be added? Nothing for me. Okay. Oh, so I still have this open action item. Oleg, I'll need to get with you separately. I have misplaced my CDF Zoom account invitation apparently. So I reuse this as Zoom account today. So Mark Connect mm -hmm. again. Um, still have the open action item to open the jet for Docker operating system support. Um, Oleg, you want to share with us how things are going on the Windows support policy? Okay, yeah, I can probably share my screen for a second. Okay. Just a second, I'm preparing. And I'll stop the share. Okay, so yeah. I'm not a host here. So oh, I, so I need to grant you host. Things have changed. Okay, there. you can just the screen share for me. I... Uh, that, that's okay. Let me make you a host. It's easy to do. There you go. Because I'll need to do the same with Rishab. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, this is my screen. E Yes. Yeah, so if uh, you, um, weeks ago, I started the discussion about Windows support policy again. So why it's important, we have a, a GSOC project uh, related to Windows services um, uh, and the YAML support there. In order to do that, we need to define our .NET support policy because currently we support .NET 2.0, which is pretty old. Uh, you can find libraries for that. It's definitely a major overhead to maintain that and we would like to drop that. So that's uh, the story behind why I restart this discussion now. Um, unfortunately, Budika is unable to join today because yeah, uh, there are some events in India, but uh, yeah, hopefully um, he will be able to join next meetings. So uh, what do we have? Uh, we have a proposal for Windows support policy. Uh, there was a discussion on the mailing list about what exactly would be the support policy. Originally, uh, we started from this, uh, the platforms we wanted to support. Uh, this approach uh, yeah, got a lot of feedback about what exactly do we maintain, what exactly we commit, etc. 
So instead of doing uh, uh, such approach, um, I proposed an alternate option, which is similar to how our web browser support organized. Uh, just a second, web, web browsers. So basically, we introduce a number of support tiers with clear expectations for these tiers, and they also track changes, etc. So this is what is our browser support policy. And uh, this is what is our Windows support policy, which is currently in pull request. Uh, but yesterday we had a Jenkins governance meeting and they we got sign off uh, to proceed with merge. So assuming that uh, there is no negative feedback at this meeting, I would just go ahead. So here, what do we have? Mm. We have four levels. First level is full support. It's basically latest 64-bit supported versions. Uh, of Windows and Windows Server plus versions we use in Docker. Um, level two is basically whatever is supported by Microsoft and 64-bit. So this is what we support and this is what we intend uh, to keep supporting. Level three is uh, kind of supported but best effort. And uh, here are interesting things here, but yeah, so 64-bit versions which are no longer supported by Microsoft, uh, 32 and uh, other uh, uh, architectures. So, for example, uh, some people still run Jenkins on Itanium and other things. So, it goes to tier three because, yeah, although it's an important case, we definitely have no opportunity to test it. Um, also, non mainstream versions like Windows Embedded, basically the same reason we have no opportunity to test uh, changes. Uh, though, yeah, if uh, uh, there are suggested changes which do not uh, impact compatibility to level one and level two support. Of course, we one could have said that. Also, preview releases, basically, pre because preview releases can change. It, uh, well, uh, whatever circle um, and yeah, whatever preview state, I didn't uh, describe the Windows support policy. Yeah, there are documents uh, linked uh, below. And actually, um, also um, additional engines like. Well, emulation, wine, reactors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of that is something. Uh, well, you could technically test, but uh, it's well, in some sense, it's Windows API. It's not really Windows. Uh, if Jenkins is, works, today, it's fine. If not, okay, life happens. And uh, unsupported is basically uh, platforms where we know that. Uh, there are some serious limitations. So here we have Windows XP below uh, Service Pack three. Uh, yeah, so end of life uh, 10 years ago or so, uh, it comes from uh, the .NET uh, framework version because we propose to bump the minimum requirement to .NET framework for the zero. Uh, well, now there are uh, a lot of reasons for that, including um, better TLS implementation, including uh, just a wider set of libraries which support uh, this version. Mm. So we would like to move. Also, well, I added Windows Phone mostly just for fun, but yeah, theoretically you could run uh, Jenkins there. Um, and the yeah, other Windows platforms released before 2008. Uh, it's just a cutoff. Uh, 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 this date is set, well, because nobody really wants to support uh, all the platforms. Um, but yeah, generally this policy is up for discussion. So what do you think about such policy? Any concerns, any additional uh, things to keep in mind? And so for me, I think this is the right approach. Mm -hmm. uh, I, did see, I did see comments from James Nord on phrasing a little bit, but I wasn't overly concerned there. I think it's good that it's, the pull request is getting reviewed. That's great. Mm, yeah, I need to, uh, to review that. I haven't checked my inbox notifications from yesterday. Mm. Uh, okay, best effort. Uh, yeah, for me, best effort seems a common phrase, so I'm not sure, but that's relatively minor. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, we'll clarify it with uh, James synchronously. So my main point here that some support policy is better than no support policy because right now we don't have anything documented. Well, it was a status quo, but uh, uh, for example, personally, I used to maintain some libraries like Windows Process Management Library, etc. 
uh, there were problems with it. We had problems with updating the GNR and the GNA um, for Java 11. Again, uh, some versions stopped working on all the Windows versions. And uh, well, since there is no support policy, it's hard to really say anything whether it's supported or not. So I would be happy to at least have something. Mm -hmm. So I guess my action item is to review comments from uh, James. Um, and uh, if there is no negative feedback, I will probably nurse it uh, this week. Excellent. Thank you, Oleg. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, too. So, yeah, I'll stop screen sharing and make you a host again. Okay. Oh, right. So I've got to somehow reteach this thing to allow others to share their screens. Or just switch to the CDF account. All yeah, right. that's a preferred option. <laughs> yes, I will do that, Oleg. I apologize. Okay, so we've still got the open item to review the Docker Build Rework PR. Uh, and that one continues. I'm actually scheduled for some time with Alex tomorrow that he and I can discuss further there. Jim, my apologies. We continue our focus on core release automation and keeping other things going. We will get there. <laughs> no, it's it's all good. I understand completely. The core release is really, really cool. I, I definitely want to see that uh, come on out. So next topic then was moving of the PowerPC VM. Jim, you want to go ahead and tell us what's happening there? Yeah, so I was informed uh, by Raphael, the power uh, contact, uh, that they are moving data centers slash like hosting platforms uh, for their community, uh, open source community access to power uh, VMs. So moving, uh, they, they can't do any transfers. Is I think they're doing from like some sort of IBM cloud product to now OpenStack. And I guess they, the formats of the VMs don't transfer. So they're spinning up new VMs. Um, and there's about a 90 day um, basically a uh, countdown for the, the life of the VM you guys currently have. I think it's actually a little less than 90. I think 90 started back last week when I was talking to you, Mark. Um, well, I did talk to the power contact. He said it's possible to spin up the new VM uh, in tandem um, with the old VM. So if you guys, I know we, we kind of talked uh, that you guys didn't really have that much to transfer over or you guys had, you know, init scripts uh, but the VM should be up at the same time. Uh, so if you guys needed to transfer anything over, you guys can. Um, and this is going to be a more, I guess, permanent home for the community uh, open source um, VMs. Um, the S390 VM is staying the same. It's not changing. This is just about the power. Great. So so we'll we'll be notified then of what the address is of the new machine and we can just connect to it and the, yeah, we'll get so, the credentials? Yeah, so I'm gonna ping um, Raphael today uh, and then I'll probably just send you an email uh, to you and Oleg, uh, not Oleg, um, Olivier, um, about uh, the credentials. Um, Perfect. Yeah, so I might need your SSH keys again. Um, I think we have them in the email chain. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue, but I'll, I'll, I'll message you if I do. Great. Yeah, you, you let, let me know if you need it. That's just a case of we need to share a public key with you. So yeah. no, no large threat there. And yeah, that sounds that sounds great. Thank you very much. Thanks again to IBM for being willing to host host the, yeah, no. this S390 machine and the uh, PowerPC. Thanks very much. Yeah, and just to confirm again, you guys, you guys planning on transfer over things? Or do you guys have those init scripts you guys were talking about? We, we um, won't transfer anything that I know of. I have nothing okay. to transfer and I'm not aware of Olivier having anything to transfer. We intentionally try to have, try to act as though the agents on ci.jenkins.io are ephemeral. They okay. should be, and, and many of them actually literally are ephemeral, right? We use, mm -hmm. therefore, we have to act like certain of the agents are ephemeral because they are. Others, we want to just act like they're ephemeral even if they're not really ephemeral. Okay. All right. Sweet. So uh, I just want to give you guys a heads up on that issue. So um, I'll let you know when the new one's up. And, and once we've started using the new one, 
Um, we just notify Raphael and you that we're done with the old one and he'll turn it off. Yep. Great. Yeah, he'll probably turn it off before that 90 days if you guys are done with the old one. Right. There's no no reason for us to have him wasting wasting power on the machine that we've transitioned yeah. off. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks. Anything else, Jim, on the PowerPC transition? Nope. Okay. Rishab, you're next. Get plug-in performance improvement project. Let's see if I can figure out how to let you share the screen. Okay. Stop man. sharing. And multiple participants. Oh, no one. Can't sharing. Oh, here we go. All participants can share. Try it now, Rishab. Yes, I can do it. Excellent. Great. So let me introduce you. Rishab is a Google Summer of Code student. He's working on a project that I like, that I am. I find it very fun. It's a Git plugin performance improvement project. Rishab, go ahead. So thank you, Mark, for introducing me. So one of the things we're doing to improve the performance of Git plugin is basically evaluating Git operations in terms of their execution time for both of the existing implementations, which is the native Git implementation, CLI Git, and JGit, which is purely Java implementation. And we're using JMH to evaluate uh, the, uh, the, op the performances of these implementations. JMH uh, is a Java written micro, ben micro benchmarking framework. It's easily uh, integ uh, it's integrated in a Maven project. And you're using it like that. So the current plan is to, the first step is to select a Git operation to benchmark. Then uh, we test it in an isolated environment provided by JMH. The third step is to take the testing from a local machine to uh, the Jenkins infrastructure, existing Jenkins infrastructure, to create a comprehensive uh, report where we test our benchmarks in different setups, different environments. The fourth step is, which is under discussion, is to use Jenkins telemetry to gather user feedback on performance enhancement. This is something I'm going to talk about after I discuss the strategy we've used for micro benchmarking. So I'd like to share my uh, one of the little experiments I did with git fetch. I selected git fetch as an operation to benchmark and I'm going to share my results for that. So before I share my result, I'm a little background on what I was doing. So the aim was clearly to test a git operation on the basis of its implementation, uh, removing the noise added by any external environment and JVM optimizations while I'm testing the operation. Uh, the testing environment, I, ha I, have, an, I have a macOS environment. Uh, I used a remote, the remote gate repository used by me was a local file so that I don't uh, interact with the internet while I'm testing the benchmark. Uh, the process overheads like declaring a variable or initializing the repository, all of that was taken care by GMH. The benchmark only calculated the single operation, which was git fetch. Uh, then the test parameter we, uh, we, cho we chose was the size and structure of remote repository. Uh, I had four repositories, sample repositories to test uh, git fetch with. I'll share the details of the, uh, the repository as well. So as you can see, I've, uh, these are two bar graphs you can see. And uh, the, the first one is from a vanilla benchmark. I call it the vanilla benchmark because it's not using any kind of performance uh, uh, benchmarking framework. It's just me using uh, system dot nano time to calculate uh, the time uh, execution time for git fetch. This was done uh, in the form of a J unit test. So these are the results. It's pretty uh, ob uh, obvious here that it's showing that C uh, CLI git, the native git, it's able to uh, for each repository of the repositories, it's able to perform better than J git in every scenario. And um, the repository size I, uh, and structure I, I'd like to show first before the results. So this is, these are the four repositories I chose. Uh, the sizes are here. This, this is basically uh, 0.0034 MB, then 5 MB, then we have 93 and 324. And, and, and the number of commits and that's the structure. So, um, so with the vanilla benchmark, you can, you can see what is happening. With the GMH benchmark, there was a difference, a clear difference, which uh, which I suspected was because of uh, the JVM. 
so before uh, so the jmh what it does is it warms up the jvm for us uh, for multiple iterations so that it it is uh, trying to uh, simulate the same environment uh, the git operation would run in so to confirm that this was happening because of the jvm i ran another test and this uh, jmh uh, it also gives us an option to run the benchmark in a different mode it is called the single shot mode which based basically involves uh, running the benchmark without warming up the jvm and when the jvm was not warmed enough i could see that jgit was not able to perform better than git so from this from these results i was able to gather some observations one of the the, the biggest thing i could find out was that jgit was able to perform better than git uh, cli git under the condition that the repository size is uh, let's say lower than 5 mb and since we can fairly assume that the jvm will always be warmed up to the point when we reach uh, when we are running the git operations so this this is a this is a, a fair conclusion that jgit will perform better than cli git under the condition that the repository size is less than 5 mb so this is the one of the uh, one of the nice results we had from the experiment the other is a clear observation that uh, the benchmarking framework we can see the execution times are are reduced uh, in terms of their magnitude magnitude which i think means that it suppose it's doing what it's supposed to and uh, nano time is involving some kind of process overheads and uh, things i'm not aware of probably so um, so yeah these are the results and uh, okay and the and after the fourth step i was talking about was using user feedback so we have two scenarios under which we could possibly do that the first one is that uh, we we include system dot nano time for some operations some git operations we want to test and we uh, we for one week we trial we gather data from user uh, we basically uh, gather the uh, for different for both of the implementations the user data for execution time for for the for their use cases and we would we would have a, a good reference data on how uh, we would have to plan our benchmarking strategy the second scenario how we could use jenkins telemetry is to first uh, add the performance enhancement that is whatever we uh, whatever report we have whatever conclusion we have from our uh, uh, study uh, using the existing jenkins infrastructure we uh, we encode that in the git plugin and then after doing that and giving performance enhancement as an option what i want is that i want what we want is that we want to gain user feedback on whether the user is using that option or not and secondly is that option is using performance enhancement is that actually working in the intended way or not so this is this is one of the open questions we have and uh, we are discussing it currently uh, currently and 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 yeah any any questions from you guys anything you would like to ask so rishab one of the specific yeah. reasons that i was hoping for feedback here was in terms of what's allowed and not allowed in terms of telemetry and oleg i think you've had past experience with telemetry kind of questions what are we generally allowed to collect from our users i know it has to be for a limited time uh, so uh, telemetry is a um, Uh, there is a policy uh, which uh, declares what you can collect but basically as long as data is anonymous and as long as you reduce the traffic so that it provides only basic metrics um, you can uh, run with that so to be honest uh, i'm not really sure that uh, using the jenkins telemetry right now is a good step because uh you are doing a lot of profiling in first three steps but uh, the jenkins telemetry can be used uh, when uh, the repository stalls or whatever uh, but in practice um, you will uh, see a lot of companies uh, operating with extremely big uh, git repositories so uh, you cannot use telemetry to just uh, collect information about common operations basically yeah, you will see uh, short operations long operations but mostly because of the data sizes um, you can uh, probably collect uh, information about particular operations uh, but yeah 
uh, to be honest, I'm quite skeptical about uh, doing telemetry. So the, uh, one, of the, one of the thoughts on telemetry had been to actually send back to the destination point repository size information along with the, the, mm -hmm. the duration information. So an LS remote took this much time and based on local copy of the repository, we know that the repository has this many objects in it or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, is, would that. Do you think that would be allowed for the, from the telemetry record perception or is that too, too much at risk of not anonymizing anymore? I think that it's uh, possible in principle. So okay. yeah, it needs wider discussion in the community, but uh, I don't see reason to say no to that. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, uh, what decisions would you make on, uh, based on this data? And so the, for me, at least, the decision was trying to understand what are the actual sizes of repositories mm. and the distribution of sizes in the community. Because if, if your assumption had been, hey, we're going to find many that have large repositories, mine was most repositories will be under the five megabyte size. Um, but but yeah, I- Yeah, probably, uh, but uh, what's your target audience? So we are trying to improve Git plugin performance. If the repository is uh, five megabytes, most likely this repository has no real issues with performance of the Git plugin. So the theory is uh, that this project rather targets uh, uh, users with big repositories and with specific use cases where Git plugin performance uh, could be improved. So if we use uh, this uh, telemetry in order to capture these use cases and to discover where Git plugin uh, becomes slow, uh, yeah, it's a good thing. Uh, but yeah. Uh, you need to filter the data properly and you, before you start uh, investing time in that, you should be sure that uh, the data you collect actually will help you with decisions. So it's not just telemetry for telemetry, it's telemetry to help uh, the project. And for example, if the same could be achieved, let's say, instead of pointing telemetry, etc., but uh, running a survey, uh, or, asking uh, Jenkins contributors to uh, submit their feedback about Git plugin performance issues, et cetera. Um, yeah, maybe it's something which could be more effective there. I'm not sure, but for example, uh, what I would recommend uh, the team to consider, uh, yeah, there, uh, these are great technical steps, but uh, there are also non-technical steps we could take. So for example, um, uh, there is already a great data collected for this project, including some metrics, et cetera. So what if, for example, uh, you create a um, first blog post, announce the project, uh, share such metrics, and uh, ask uh, readers to provide feedback. For example, in a Google form and ask, uh, 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 basically, do you have a Git plugin performance issues? Uh, and could you please provide uh, some details like, repository size or whatever you want to collect uh, so that uh, we get information from users and from the field. And you can also invite them uh, to join the project uh, uh, meetings and probably provide more feedback. So for me, such a way might be efficient and less time, time consuming than implementing telemetry. Good. Thanks. I had not considered the, the idea of a survey and, and certainly with with 250,000 installations, uh, even if we only get feedback from a tenth of 1%, that's still quite a volume of, of people that have given feedback on interesting, interesting data. And it would bias towards uh, asking them the question would bias towards people with an interest giving us answers. Yeah, I like that, thanks. Yeah, right. So yeah, you already have questions uh, which you want to answer. Yeah, I've seen the original proposal. Uh, there were already these questions to discover and to survey. So if you reform the, uh, that's somehow, maybe it would be a, a good initial step in parallel with uh, doing all the things in the list. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thanks very much, Oleg. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yeah, maybe another thing to consider is how you do benchmarking. Because for example, uh, if you use Java 11, in Java 11 you have uh, uh, Java Flight Recorder uh, embedded. So users can perform low cost profiling. And again, if there are users who have performance issues, uh, who are willing to migrate to Java 11, they could just uh, provide us profiles even from production instances, uh, provide this data. Or if you can re reproduce particular uh, cases, again, we could uh, capture them. For example, from CI Jenkins IO. I'm not sure whether CI Jenkins IO has any performance issues uh, with Git right now. Uh, but yeah, if it does, yeah, we can just enable flight records uh, there and uh, collect some information. So I was I was not aware of flight recorder. I think that's an excellent idea, Rishab, for from Oleg yes. to consider the Java 11 world and and using a profiling tool like flight recorder. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. So well, uh, you can use it on Java 8 uh, if you're an Oracle customer or there are other profiling tools. For example, JetBrains uh, provides some enterprise ones. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're accessible with a student license. Uh, but if you want uh, to get them, I know uh, the contacts. Uh, but yeah, f if you target Java 11, it's basically a part of the OpenJDK. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it's part of Adopt OpenJDK. And I've seen announcements uh, somewhere that it's also available for OpenGen9. I might be wrong. Great. Yeah, I've just seen a Twitter a while ago. Excellent. Thank you. So marvelous to, to have had you here, Rishab. Are there other things that you wanted to present to us? No, I think this is it. Thank you for this discussion. I think I've got great points to explore more options. Right, and I assume we put Java Flight Recorder as a topic on our next office hours, and let's yes. let's as part of your exploring in the coming week, it'd be great to hear what your experience was there. Sure, I, I, mean, I have added it. In my action list, yes. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. All right, then I'm going to switch back to my screen and. Yeah. Yeah. You should well, be able to. Uh, thanks a lot for this project. It should be really interesting to users. And, well, if we can improve uh, the behavior, especially uh, for embedded uh, Java client library, then yeah, it would be awesome. Well, and I, yeah, I, I am thoroughly excited by Rishab's work so far and delighted to work with him. It's been a lot of fun already. We're getting ready for Git plugin 4.3 release. We, we hope yeah. to do it by the end of the month and, and no, end of month, before, about the time of 235's release as an LTS. And so we're, we're going to be busily, busily working. Lots to, lots to do. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. um, we had put custom Jenkins build service on as a possible topic. Oleg, I don't detect them present, so I'm going to take that no, off. No, uh, Sladen and Chris yep. and I actually there. Oh, oh, great. Okay. Yep. So shall we give them Sladen? Krishna, would you like to share your screens? Or you want to just yeah, give us a status? Yeah, if you could probably uh, give me access for a couple of minutes, maybe I could share some things. Okay. And I think you should be able to share. I think I set the control so you can share. Okay, okay. Just tell me when you can probably see my screen. Mm -hmm. see yeah. Okay. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, with the custom Jenkins distribution build service, what we plan to do is um, provide an out of the box solution so that users can, um, you know, configure most of the plugins. Um, online and probably choose what plugins they want to choose. Um, based on those configurations, uh, we could generate some sort of, you know, um, the packager configuration so that the, the custom war packager, you know, just directly downloads the war file and you can right off the bat download the war file and use it as is. Also, we were planning to provide users with an ability to, you know, configure their JCAS files right off the bat. So. So I'll just give you a demo of what the, um, what the project is all about. So what we plan to do is list all of the plugins that Jenkins has. So for now, I've just listed, uh, this is the prototype. Okay. 
So I've just listed a couple of the plugins. So what users will have the option to do, you know, to edit the configuration of each and every plugin. So he can edit the version of the plugin. He can add to the configuration. So if you click add to configuration, add to configuration, those plugins just get, get added to the configuration with their latest versions. If the user wants to select uh, a particular version, he can definitely edit those versions. If he wants to edit the configuration, I mean, if he wants to specify anything custom, uh, he can do that as well. So when you click on edit configuration, what we plan to see in the future is something like this. So, you know, you can, uh, you, this is just an example of the SSH configuration. Thank you. Uh, you know, he can set the system message. He can set number of tries, the launch time out in seconds. And um, so I'll just set dummy values for one, uh, maybe 12 and, uh, you know, hello world. And then you hit submit, you'll be taken to this page. So what you should see in this configuration is your JK requirement. Obviously, it's just a prototype, so it's not generated. Um, you should get to see whatever values you've entered previously into this. So that will get you ready for using the JCAS requirement right out of the box. And what you see at the end of the editor year should be your packager configuration uh, that Jenkins custom war packager uses to, you know, generate the war file. So as you can see, this is just an example uh, picked up the uh, picked up Oleg's repository actually. Um, it just picks off certain uh, demos and it displays it over here. So after this, the user will have the chance to edit the version. So if the user is not happy with the war version, he can maybe change it um, on the go. And after changing it on the go, he can provide it with a set of options. So all those are just dummy buttons right now, but some of them do function. Um, if you hit and download JCAS YML, whatever YML you um, added over here just gets downloaded. So as you can see in my bottom left corner of the screen, I have a JCAS YML downloaded. Um, after that, you can even select to download the WAR file right off the bat. You can download the Docker file as well. The WAR file generation takes a lot of time currently because um, it's uh, quite weak, but you can definitely uh, do that as well. Um, add more plugins to the configuration. So if you click this button, the user will be taken back to the initial plugin list page and he can configure these and he can add more plugins if he wants. If he's not happy with the initial configuration, he can add more. And uh, he can also create a request. Um, so if you see right here, um, what we plan to do is if the community creates something which is widely used. So say, suppose you create something like a Kubernetes or a AWS plugin and you want the entire community to have a look at it. You know, you just create a pull request, which will get created in our Jenkins repository, what we plan to do. So this PR just describes, uh, and you select the blank. So just say war package for some and, uh, and you hit on submit. So for now, this is a sandbox repository, which is my own, which is private to me. So if you have a look here, uh, you should get um, the new, um, uh, just, just hold on a second. It should, um, Yeah. So whatever pull request description, whatever branch you've entered, it will just uh, you create a pull request with all of the packager configuration and your JCAS YML. So the JCAS YML is empty; it doesn't get added to the files list here. But yeah, in an ideal case scenario, you would have the entire uh, both of the files available as pull request, and the entire mentors can go through it, you know, provide suggestions and stuff, and then merge the pull request into the main repository for the community to use. Um, apart from that, one of the major functionalities that we plan to have is pre-built configuration. So once you have added your configuration to the pull request to the repository, it should show up right here. So maybe you can, this, these are just dummy sections created, but you can have a look at them later. Um, they are, uh, the plug is configured, uh, you know, as popular, most used, highly rated. So you can just uh, order them as per uh, the usage. And also we provide the search bar. That's a dummy bar right now. Um, you can maybe search for a particular plugin right off the bat. And as you can see, if you just view this configuration, it will take you back to this page. And now the, uh, the name of the uh, YML file has been added here and you can see the entire configuration. So this has also been picked up from Rick's repository, which is a formula repository. So again, you know, whatever configuration you add will just be picked up the repository and added here. And then the users can you know, do whatever they wanted to do before, like download the WAR file, Docker file, the JCAS file, add more plugins or whatever, create all the or even if modify the entire existing one. So yeah, these were probably most of the functions list. There is a lot of work to still be done. Um, yeah, that was uh, probably my demo for this plugin. Um, Christian, if you want to add anything, he can. But thanks, guys. All right, y'all. So I, the main thing I guess we wanted to show here is that we're using <laughs> the whole point of this is to be able to automatically generate a configuration for your 
like your Jenkins <laughs> depend with the inputs kind of on the UI. And so like Leslie Sladen has this really nice example and um, it's a guess for looking for any type of feedback or anything else that could be more beneficial for you all here at the platform stage. So any questions or comments about what we've been doing or? Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for this demo. It uh, looks uh, really great. Um, yeah, we have three months ahead, so looking forward to see the final version as a service. Yeah. So, so the the concept seems to be, and I I obviously should have have understood this before, but it seems to be crowdsourcing, choosing good configurations or interesting configurations for Jenkins Jenkins setup. So somebody could submit a, a proposal to have a GitLab focused one or a GitHub focused one or a Bitbucket or, or some, a Giddy focused one. That, that looks really exciting. Thanks very much, Slayton. So any other feedback? Uh, if not, I could uh, do some technical comments. Oh, go ahead, Oh, like please, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see how it uh, works in practice, and and, yeah, and uh, it would be also great, for example, uh, to have a discussion about this project uh, next week during the IEX hackathons, because I believe uh, that there would be a lot of users who would be interested to see it, uh, and because yeah, initial configuration of Jenkins is definitely not the best part user experience, and such service could help with that. Uh, one of the things in this project is that uh, it definitely needs more contributors uh, who would try it out, who would provide the feedback. And uh, from what I understood, uh, one of the problems is um, having uh, somebody to help with uh, the front end. Uh, because, yeah, right now we have a lot of Java experts. Uh, but, uh, uh, Sladen, could you please uh, describe how the front end is implemented? Yeah, so currently the front end is just vanilla JavaScript. So um, I guess I relinquished my control of the screen, but I would uh, if I go to have a chance, yeah. So yeah, so currently it's just vanilla JavaScript and a bit of HTML files. So this is uh, probably just a set of uh, HTML files just organized in a file because it's a prototype currently. So what we plan to do is, uh, as Christian suggested, we would probably uh, use a front end framework like uh, React or Angular. So that it makes it easier to, you know, now, for example, if you are actually using the demo, um, you know, for example, if the user edits a particular configuration or adds a particular plugin, the configuration that he has already edited should probably be cached in the browser on the client side. And we would not have to make constant API calls backend to keep uh, retrieving the configuration and presenting. So that would be much easier if we were not using native and vanilla JavaScript and be using a dedicated front end framework. Um, if you were using that, that would probably help in, you know, organizing stuff, keeping it more clean and attracting uh, more contributors who are contributing to the project. So, yeah, so currently it's just a, it's just my uh, initial implementation was using in HTML JavaScript. Uh, it could be done using this as well, but uh, yeah, if we were using a front end framework, it would help in multiple ways. So, uh, contributions are welcome. Thank you. So, we have a few examples in Jenkins. Uh, so, if you would like to build a static site or whatever, you could now take a look at Jenkins plugin site. Uh, also, yeah, we have uh, a few other services, but yeah, really the most popular uh, front end is written uh, in Java and Java like technologies. But having something in React uh, and is definitely reasonable in this project or, or whatever other technology you prefer. And definitely, we could uh, find uh, some assistance from contributors. So let's try to find uh, more people who are interested in these technologies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also, yeah, we have CSS uh, libraries, for example, for Jenkins website, now also for Jenkins, etc. So when it comes to styling, uh, I think we could uh, improve look and feel so it uh, looks like a Jenkins service. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely not an immediate goal. Yeah.
Thanks, so like any any other feedback from the from the group here. So Sladen, I assume that the eventual destination for this would be something connected to Jenkins.io, but during the development phase, you develop independently. Um, I would love to participate because I've got some configurations that I run already as part of my testing. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you copy me periodically on email or remind me, hey, Mark, there's something that would be interesting to try, I would, I would love to be one of your experimenters. I, I'm, not, I'm not terribly focused on your specific project, but I would be mm -hmm. interested in borrowing your work to help me on my projects. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Um, I'll copy you in all of the emails, whatever we're doing. So we initially do not plan to host it, but if we have a POC working with maybe an initial set of just, uh, maybe we could host it for the, during the phase one. Yeah. Well, let's, let's see about that. And yeah, I guess uh, we will meet uh, frequently at the platform seat meetings. Yeah. Great. So, yeah. Also, did kind of want to mention too. There is a Gitter channel for the project where we're pretty active in talking about um, the design. And if you're interested in following along, you can hop in our channel and ask questions at any time as well. And I'll put it to the platform sig Gitter if you are interested in joining or working. <laughs> maybe. Thank you, Kristen. Well, in the Gitter yeah. channel, maybe enough because that lets me then re decide, hey, when I reach a personal point where, oh, I need this, I need something like such and such, I drop into your Gitter channel and see, hey, where are you? How, how close are you? Could I, could I leverage that for now? Thanks. Yeah, yeah we'll put uh, the link to the Gitter uh, into meeting notes. Thanks. All right. Anything else on on the uh, custom work on the the packaging service, uh, GSOC project? That's all. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, speaking of custom work packaging, uh, last week we had a code dive session. So you can already find a recording of it uh, on the Jenkins YouTube channel. If you're interested uh, to know how the engine uh, for building uh, Jenkins works and Docker images. Uh, Operate. Hopefully, it will be completely different in one year, but let's see. <laughs> I think it's so cool that it exists. The notion of creating a, a, a single war that contains everything, all of my plugins, that's uh, an amazing piece of work. Thanks, Oleg. Well, it wasn't me. I, it was a part of Jenkins for a long time. I just uh, applied some secret knowledge and other things uh, to package things correctly so they, that they run. We still needed some patches, for example, in JCask plugin to uh, run from a word file, but yeah, it's a uh, detail. Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah speaking of that, slide, slide in. Uh, if uh, the service eventually supports a Jenkins file runner, I think uh, it will, uh, would also find the audience. Yep, definitely. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let me take back sharing then and let's look at other topics. So we had, we're almost out of time. We had one last topic that I'm aware of. Um, the Docker images and Alpine are under evaluation right now because we, we saw that it looks like Java 8 252 is not available for Alpine on the version that we've got. And so we're evaluating how do we get to a current version of Java? Right now, it's we're running Java 8, an older version. Uh, so it's, I think 2.12 is currently bundled. And we need to move it and bring it up to the current. Yeah. So one of the ways that we're considering doing that is switching to adopt OpenJDK. Thanks, Jim, to your, your leading that, that effort. And those discussions will continue. Yeah. So, um, if I recall correctly, the issue we hit today is that uh, there is no adopt OpenJDK images for Alpine and Java 8. It's that there's no official because there is the unofficial, right? It's an unofficial yeah. image for, for Java 8 Alpine. Oh. 
uh, it's uh, difficult to define what official means because, for example, the current image we use, OpenJDK, uh, well, it's kind of official, but it's official not in terms that it's not supported by OpenJDK project, it's not supported by Oracle, uh, OpenJDK Jigsaw team or whatever. Actually, it's uh, somebody in Docker packaging it periodically, it's always behind. Uh, but yeah, whether you want to call it official, uh, yeah, you're welcome to do so. But the recommendation from OpenJDK team was to actually to not use this image. Ah, uh, okay, got it. So, so we're we're already already in the danger zone with the current image. We're not likely making it any more dangerous by using an image that the Adopt OpenJDK team actually tests and 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 yeah. uses and delivers. Yeah, so I'm totally willing to just buy the bullet and uh, switch uh, all uh, Alpine images for Java 8 uh, to adopt OpenJDK. Uh, there are sample requests from Alex already. I was also about doing so. I just uh, got stumped on the other things like UI UX Hackathon. Um, but uh, personally, I would just go ahead and switch to adopt OpenJDK. And, and that's Alex and I are scheduled for some time tomorrow to discuss that. Uh, so, and I've invited Olivier to join as well so that we could have a conversation about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you need me on the call? You're welcome to join, but not, not required, Oleg. I would love to have your insights. I'll send you the invite and let you decide if you want to join or not. Okay. Yeah, I'll see. I uh I also can put some pressure on the adopt team to see if they can push a, a release of um those official images for uh Alpine for Java 8. That that would be very kind of you, Jim. That's ask for adopt support. They and I would understand if they said no, but that that would be very attractive. I think I think I think uh, update is supposed to be coming soon. I know I'm working on uh, this pipeline that will connect Adopt uh, OpenJDK Docker images and our testing, uh, Adopt uh, OpenJDK testing Jenkins servers. And once that pipeline is connected, um, then all our nightly images that get produced will be tested. Um, and then we have a much more a faster pipeline to do PRs against the Docker uh, ima uh, official image um, repository. So we can pump out um, a lot more updates and a lot more base images, um, like I've been telling you guys for a long time. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah. it's coming. So what could we help with, uh, regardless of the official and official status? Uh, we could introduce a new tag uh, for Adopt Open, uh, Adopt Open GDK Alpine. So, for example, start not from uh, default uh, tag, uh, but for, for another additional tag. And in such case, we don't really care whether it's official or not. So we start uh, shipping these images, we announce, we ask Jenkins users to provide feedback. Uh, maybe we'll discover some glitches here and there. Um, but uh, I think it would be reasonable to start uh, early adoption. Good idea. Right, and that feels like those those ideas are worth discussing uh, in tomorrow's session with, with Alex. That way we get all of us together on the same page. Thanks. Yeah. Anything else with regard to Docker images and Alpine? Okay, um, last type topic we had was just to highlight yesterday was the 25th anniversary official of Java. And uh, so the Jenkins project tweeted uh, and lots of, lots of different things congratulating a very long lived project that certainly had a great impact on the Jenkins community. Yeah, right. So yeah, there is no specific details here, just Highlight, yeah, uh, Java celebrates a date, so why don't we celebrate as well? And thanks to Marky, thanks uh, uh, to Mark uh, for uh, helping yesterday so that uh, together we delivered uh, this post. Basically, well, we just discovered uh, that somebody celebrates on Twitter and joined to the party. Uh, but yeah, 
why not? So yeah, it's definitely something to highlight. Yeah, Oleg's Oleg's image and and slide slide work is impressive for me. I'm delighted. I he always makes me reminds me that wow, we can we can use people who think graphically in in images. That's great. That covers all the topics for today. Any other topics? Okay, then we'll conclude the Platform SIG meeting. A recording will be posted in roughly an hour. Thanks very, very much, everyone. Thanks. It Thanks reminds me that I well. should do recordings uh, for yesterday <laughs> because uh, I haven't published anything yet. <laughs> <laughs>